Hi, I'm Jamie Brakus. Welcome to Fit and Delicious. Learn it, live it, lose it, you're gonna love it. That's all it takes to make a change. Today, we begin with fitness fusion and a combo of ideas and workouts and a special message from Jack LaLanne on self-improvement. Then it's the healthy version of zucchini bread from Chef Danny. Then we'll learn how to measure progress without a scale with a follow-up from Danny and how to stay motivated for the long haul. Then I'm back with an easy way to exercise by sitting to stay fit. We finish up with everyone's favorite snack, homemade guacamole with Danny. Get ready to love it. Learn it, live it, lose it, you'll love it. The process of change happens slowly. By doing a little bit each day, you can build on your successes. By starting with just one or two goals, you can easily ingrain a new habit into your life and have daily victories. These little things that you can change today will change your life without turning your life upside down. Let's learn a little fitness fusion. You know, time is the biggest factor why people don't work out. Now I'm gonna give you the optimum program in the least amount of time. By doing dual movements, you'll save time, but you get fit, healthy, and strong, and work out your entire body with two moves during the same exercise. All right, guys, get off your seat and get on your feet, let's go. You're gonna need a chair and small handheld weights, guys. All right, first thing we're gonna do, I love this one, it is a squat thrust. You're gonna bring it down and then up right there that's it good again these dual movements save you time but you're gonna get fit healthy and strong a couple more and release okay now guys from there what I want you to do is a press right here that's it and that's all you're gonna do is then lift the shoulder up that's it good nice and easy slow and controlled and release other side that's it guys remember more isn't better when it comes to exercise better is better you gotta do a little resistance a little cardio hey if you combine them that's fantastic and release now you put the weights down here we're gonna do a push-up okay and a butt kick so you're gonna do a push-up kick right kick left push-up boom hit those buns Hit your shoulders, your chest muscles, and your triceps all at once. That's it. One more. Down to the right and to the left. All right, guys, now what I want you to do is a lateral raise, right, with an outer hip. Boom, right there. So as the leg goes out, so does the shoulder. This is the middle portion of your shoulder. That's it. Gives you a nice sculpted look at the shoulders. And release. Other side. Again, use the chair as balance. If you don't need it, that's fine. Good, good, good. You gotta build that muscle tissue. So important. That's it, two more. And release. All right, guys, from here, we're gonna do a raise with your quadricep, okay? But boom, as you raise the leg up, you're doing a crunch at the same time. That's it, so you're working your abs. Give you a slimmer, trimmer, tighter waistline. That's it. And release. Other side. So let's bring this over. And then up. Right there. That's it. You gotta keep moving, guys. If you rest, you rust. That's it. Couple more. Three, two, and one. Okay, so now we're gonna do a bicep curl, okay? But it's a stationary lunge. You're here. Down. Down. That's it. That's right, guys. If you're snoozing, don't, don't, don't rest, guys. You can't have that, right? Because getting fit never gets old. You gotta just keep moving. That's it. And release. Other side, right here. Boom, down. There you go. That's it. You work your biceps, your quadriceps, your hamstrings. And release. All right, guys, right here. A deadlift. Down, up. That's it.
Good, this works your back, your hamstrings, your buns. And release, all right, right here, tricep with a reverse lunge. There you go. Five, four, three, two, one. You did it, fitness fusion. Way to go, guys. And now we have words from fitness past from our mentor, Jack LaLanne. I have outlined here, students, a 10-point self-improvement plan. Self-improvement plan, right over here. Here's a better look at it. Whoop. 10 points. Now, number one, on the top of our list, naturally, if you're going to improve yourself, today we're trying to think of improvement, student. Not only is the physical part, you having a nicer figure, but we're thinking about the spiritual aspect of it and the mental aspect of it. Now, exercise is number one. Number two, better nutrition. Number three, positive thinking. Number four, good habits. Number five, grooming. Number six, a smile. Number seven, posture. Number eight, help others. Number nine, relaxation. Number 10, faith. Now, I'm up here doing the best I can, the best I know how, to give you little secrets of helping you to improve yourself from the bottom of your feet up to the top of your head. And I promise you this, if you will follow the, these 10 points here just this week, from now through Friday, you are going to see such an amazing change, not only in your, the way you feel and your personality and the way you look, but you're gonna, people are gonna notice what a better person you're becoming. Hello, my friends, it's Danny, and today I am sharing my recipe for a classic delicious zucchini bread. Mmm. Mmm. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is preheat my oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, and then I'm gonna grease my loaf pan. I've got a nine inch loaf pan, and I'm just gonna rub a little bit of coconut oil on the inside to create a nice light coating. You could also do this with butter or a little bit of cooking spray. Next, I'm going to use a box grater to grate my zucchini. So I'm gonna need one and a half cups of grated zucchini, which is like one large or two smaller zucchinis. And what I like to do is use the smaller holes on the box grater. This way, you're gonna keep the zucchini nice and fine, which is gonna ensure that you don't end up with any big chunks of zucchini zucchini in your bread. And just a side note, zucchini does hold a lot of water, but we are not gonna strain that off of the zucchini because we're gonna use that as an extra liquid in the bread, which is gonna add some more moisture. Once I have the zucchini all ready to go, I'm gonna combine my wet ingredients, starting with two eggs, third of a cup of melted coconut oil. What I like to do is I'll just scoop it out and then I melt it in the microwave and then I measure it. So it's a third of a cup. Coconut oil is great for baking because it is an extremely stable fat. Then I've got a quarter cup of unsweetened vanilla almond milk and one teaspoon of vanilla extract. Gently whisk that all together. You just wanna mix until you've got all of those ingredients combined. And then I'm gonna push that aside and pull in a nice big bowl to combine my dry ingredients. Starting with one and three quarter cup of white whole wheat flour. And remember, white whole wheat flour has the same nutritional value as regular whole wheat flour. It just happens to be a little bit lighter in color and the texture is a little bit softer and more fine. And so what that does is it creates a much lighter and fluffier end result, which is why I like to use it for my baked goods. Then a half a teaspoon of kosher salt, one teaspoon of baking soda, one teaspoon of cinnamon, a little bit of fresh nutmeg, about a quarter teaspoon, and then finally, a half a cup of coconut sugar. Now I like to use the coconut sugar, it's a little less refined than white sugar, and it has some micronutrients in there. But if you don't have it on hand, you really could use any type of granulated sugar that you have. And just note that I'm only using a half a cup of sugar for the entire recipe, so this is not a super sweet zucchini bread. It's perfectly sweet in my opinion, but if you want it to be a little sweeter, you could add an extra quarter cup of sugar or an extra quarter cup of honey or leave the sugar as is and stir in some raisins or some chocolate chips. Then I'll just gently toss all of the dry ingredients together, make sure that they're mixed really well. And then I'm gonna pour the wet ingredients into the dry ingredients and gently mix this until it's just combined. You really don't wanna over mix it, so as soon as you see everything come together, it's ready to roll. And then my final step is to add that shredded zucchini into the bowl and a half a cup of chopped up walnuts. And again, gently stir that together. Pro tip, when buying walnuts at the grocery store, look for walnut pieces or pre-chopped walnuts. They are less expensive than the whole walnut halves, and when you're using them in recipes like this, it saves you an extra step because you don't need to chop them up yourself. Once I've got my batter ready to roll, I'm gonna transfer it into my greased loaf pan, 
And then I love to top this bread off with a few extra walnuts over the top. Not only is it beautiful, but it lets whoever's eating it know what's gonna be inside. Then this goes into my oven for 50 minutes or until it is cooked through. Now every oven varies, so the real test is one, when your kitchen starts to become very fragrant, your bread is just about done, and two, just take a toothpick, stick it right in the center of the bread, and if it comes out clean, you know your bread is ready to roll. From here, you wanna let the bread cool completely, and then what I like to do is just loosen up the sides, pop it out of the bread, and slice and enjoy. Now I love enjoying this bread just the way it is. Sometimes I'll warm it up in the toaster and then top it with a little bit of cream cheese over the top, but really it is simple, it's delicious, and it is a seasonal favorite in our house. Mm. I cannot wait for you all to try this recipe, and when you do, please do me a favor and snap a picture, tag me on Instagram and Facebook. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Danny Spees, cheers. Instead of getting angry at what the scale is saying, take a minute to think about what the scale is not telling you, like what a strong and healthy individual you're becoming. It's motivating when you feel the joy of putting on those fit jeans that you feel amazing in. Your jeans and clothes are much more effective and powerful measurement than the scale. They'll absolutely tell you if your body is changing in the right direction. It's pure physics. When you exercise, your muscles take shape. Your body transforms, becomes more contoured and tight, Hence, your clothes begin to feel looser. The scale might not register this because you've been building lean muscle while you're exercising. And everyone thinks muscle weighs more than fat. This is not true. Five pounds is five pounds. Five pounds of muscle equals five pounds of fat. However, muscle is dense. Muscle takes up less space in your body, so the scale will not reflect your progress. I want you to take out a pair of pants that fit snugly before you begin your new lean healthy habits. Take a picture with you and them for as much as you can squeeze into them. In three short weeks, I want you to try them on again. Notice the way they fit. A little looser? Are you able to ease into them standing up when before you had to sit or lie down to yank them over your legs? This is sure sign of progress towards a leaner you. What about an old fitted shirt? Notice how it's a little loose around your waist or arms? Also look for improved muscle definition when you check out your body in the mirror or how you're sitting more comfortable in a small chair. All this is measured without that dreaded scale. Now take your measurements on your waist, arms, thighs, and hips. Even if you're not losing pounds, you have very well been losing inches all over your body as your figure slims down and tones up with muscles. Other non-scale victories include a reduction of blood pressure or cholesterol, heart rate, and body fat percentage, or how you're lessening your chances of diabetes. Not only will you be able to work out for longer intervals of time, but everyday chores will also become easier. Think of all this daily activities you're gonna do with more energy for grocery shopping, walking up the stairs, house cleaning, cutting the grass, or playing with your grandkids. Your hard work will come with a few other non-scale victories, like a boost in self-esteem, confidence, and happiness. Just because the scale has stopped moving doesn't mean that you've hit a plateau in reaching your goals. Don't give up out of frustration. All healthy behaviors are well worth the effort. Whether it's better sleep at night or more energy throughout the day, start listening to the signs your body gives you that all your hard work is paying off. Those are victories without the scale. Hello, my friends, it's Danny, and today we're gonna chat about motivation. How do you get motivated? How do you stay motivated when you're trying to lose weight? It's a great question, and it's one I'm excited to dive into. So here's the thing, we have to remember that motivation, it's a feeling, right? And no feeling just magically happens to us. Feelings don't just drop out of the sky. All of the feelings that we experience are generated by what we think. Our thoughts create our feelings. So if you are trying to generate the feeling of motivation, you first have to start by investigating what are you thinking. So when you want to lose weight, when you're trying to do something different, right, whenever we need to take on any type of change, we have to create some type of plan for ourselves, some type of intention, somewhere to direct our attention in a way that is different from what we've been doing in the past. And for a lot of people, creating a plan can be really motivating at the beginning. And the reason that plan is motivating is because we're believing in it and we're excited about it and we believe it's gonna help us get our results so we feel motivated. And most people can generate motivation for a couple of days. But what starts to happen 
is that after two, three, four days, when we're not seeing the results that we want to see, side note, weight loss doesn't work that way. Weight loss takes time, it's not fast, and it's not linear, right? But a lot of times when we set a weight loss goal and we don't start to see changes right away, we start to lose motivation. And the reason that we're losing motivation is because we're no longer excited about and or believing in the plan that we've set up for ourselves. Sometimes it's just enough when that plan starts to get really hard that we're like, oh, forget this, right? This doesn't work anyway. And that absolutely creates the opposite effect of motivation. So point one, you really have to remember that motivation is a feeling and the way we are thinking is either going to motivate us or unmotivate us. Now, to take it one step further, something that I personally have found to be very true around motivation and weight loss is nothing really creates motivation and momentum like results, right? Once you really start to see the results of the work that you've put in, you start to get motivated. And the reason you start to get really motivated is because you're believing really hard in what you're doing, right? Because you're like, this is working. Oh my gosh, this is so exciting. I'm going to keep doing this. Maybe I'll tweak it like this. Maybe I'll tweak it like that, right? Those thoughts, that excitement and that belief in yourself builds more motivation. And then as that motivation is rooted with more energy and excitement, more momentum builds. So I think what we have to remember for ourselves is that at the beginning, it's very normal for anything new, anything different that we're doing to feel uncomfortable, to feel challenging. Because you have to remember your brain, our brains love easy and efficient. They don't want to use a lot of energy. They love doing what they did yesterday. And so whenever we're creating a new habit, it requires more energy and more attention, more awareness, more consciousness on our part. And that is uncomfortable. It's harder. It's harder than not doing it for sure, right? Not only that, when you come into a situation where you want something that you normally would do and now you're trying to do, do something different, that also is uncomfortable, right? Anytime you're trying to change a habit, it can feel uncomfortable at the beginning. And so I think this is why it's important that if you really want to build motivation to create some type of game plan for yourself, some type of intention, and then making a commitment to work towards that goal, that game plan, that intention, knowing that it will feel bumpy at the beginning. I almost want to invite you not to expect motivation at the beginning. Don't require motivation as a means to get you into action. Be willing to take action when you're not motivated. Because honestly, if we all sit around waiting to be motivated, it's very unlikely that we're going to make a lot of progress. Because again, it's hard to maintain that motivation when we're doing something new and different with just the power of our mind and real motivation starts to generate from results. Important to note that, again, the motivation is not actually coming from the result, it's coming from what we think about the result. So if you can generate that belief system without the result, I mean, that's the real magic. But either way, you can get there either road, the way you're thinking or by just creating a plan, committing, and then getting motivated by your results. Those are your two pathways to creating more motivation for yourself. Hey, if you want to get fit, all you have to do is sit. We're talking about the seat shaper today, guys. I'll tell you what I need you to do is get off your feet and get on your seat. Let's go. Sit and get fit. Here we go, guys. First thing we're going to do is have a seat. We're going to do a shoulder circle. That's all I want you to do is bring the circles around with a nice small movement. It's great for your shoulders, guys, right there. That's it. Nice and easy. Now let's reverse that. There you go. Keep your abs nice and tight and a smile on your face, right guys? You want to sweat, smile, and repeat. Now let's go larger ones. Well, this really loosens them up nice. That's it. And also, really firms and tones that shoulder muscle. Now, let's go to the other side. Here we go. Right there. That's it. You'll feel these without any weights at all. Gives your own body's resistance. And release. Now, hands here. We're going for the side crunches, those obliques right here. Abs nice and tight, that's it. Now what I want you to do is really squeeze the abs nice and tight as you do this movement, that's it. Sit and get fit, this is the way to go. Nice and easy, one more, and release. Now this is for the quads. 
I want you to actually use your hands as resistance. Push your leg straight up, and as you push it up, I want you to really tighten up those arms, and you're adding resistance. You're using your own body's resistance. Hold it right there and release. That's it. Push, push, push. You can challenge yourself on this. And if you don't challenge yourself, you won't change, right? Right there, hold it and release. Let's go to the other side, right here. Nice and easy. Push it up, 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 hold it and release. It's a nice symmetric. Bring it up, nice and easy. Hold it right there and release. You know, sweat is like a magic, uh, it's a, a magic elixir, right? Cover yourself in it daily. And I'll tell you what, it's gonna grant you your health wishes. One more, hold it right there, hold it, hold it and release. Now, we're gonna do an outer movement, outer thigh, so you're here. So all I want you to do is bring the hands here and push out, that's it. Push out with your legs, and then you're adding your own resistance with your hands, right there. Push out and release, that's it. Nice and easy, hold it right there, push, 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 and release. Now go to the inner thigh, same movement, right? Now you're gonna bring the legs in, hold it right there, and release. Well, you can really feel these, tighten the inner thigh, that's it, right there, bring it up. You're adding the resistance, one more. Bring it right there, hold it, hold it, hold it, and release. Now what I want you to do is I call a pretzel. You're right here, bring the leg right up. This is again working the inner thigh, right through here, and that's it guys. You only one workout away from a good mood, right? When you work out, it puts you in a good mood. You gotta smile while you do it. One more, and release. Other side, you're right here. Bring it up, you can feel it right through here. If you want added resistance, you can put your hand right here for resistance, it's okay. You gotta challenge yourself once in a while, guys. That's it, nice and easy, one more, and release. Hey, let's work those abs, right? So what I want you to do is sit up in the chair here a little further, put your hands here, lean back, and then go forward. Lean back, so you get that slimmer, trimmer, tighter waistline. That's it, nice and easy. Right there, lean back and go. One more and release. Good guys. Now, I want a reverse crunch. What that is, is you're here, bring both knees into the chest. Now, if you're just starting out, use one leg at a time. This is working the lower tummy, right? Right through here. That's it. Otherwise, bring it right here. That's it. And release. Now, it's great exercise for the back of the arms. A reverse dip. You're here, nice and easy, down and back up, that's it. This is great for the back of the arms, that flapper zapper, right guys? One more, and release. All right, nice big deep breath. Bring it up, and release. Hey, you guys did a great job. Sit and get fit. Homemade guacamole is a classic. The key is to have all the proportions just right so that all of the textures and the flavors really pop. That is so good. So I'm gonna share all of my best tips and tricks, what I do and why, so that you can rest assured that you are gonna learn how to make the best guacamole. So a very important component of making sure you have amazingly delicious guacamole is a perfectly ripe avocado. So what I like to do is use the press test. All you do is you hold your avocado up and gently press your thumb into the skin of the avocado. What I'm looking for is just a nice light indentation. So the avocado has a little bit of give when you press on it. If there's no give at all, chances are it's too hard and it's not ripe enough. And if it's too soft and your thumb mushes right in, then you may have an avocado that's overripe. Slice the avocado in half, and then I just gently tap my knife right into the pit to pull it out. Now, if that technique makes you a little bit nervous, what you can also do is just gently squish the sides of the avocado, and if the avocado is nice and ripe, the pit will pop right out, just like this, and then I just pull it out with my fingers. I'm gonna scoop the avocado out of the skins and get it into my bowl, and then top that with the juice from half of a super juicy lime. And then using the backside of my fork, I'm just gonna gently mash the avocado along the sides of the bowl until it's nice and creamy. Now, just a side note, this recipe serves anywhere between two and four people, depending on how you're using it, but it can easily be scaled up or down. Then I'm gonna add in a quarter cup each of a finely diced onion and some diced tomato. 
Now for my onion, I like to use a white onion because it has a nice mild flavor and it adds a great texture without being overpowering. If you wanted something even more mild, you could swap the onions in for some sliced scallions. Now for the tomato, I recommend choosing the most beautiful in-season ripe tomato that you can get your hands on. And first what I like to do is remove the seeds. This way we don't get um, the wet seeds and the guacamole to water it down and then chop it up. Next up, we have our garlic. Now you could do one to two cloves of garlic depending on how much you enjoy garlic, but definitely you wanna use a garlic press. This gets all the juices and the flavors from the garlic and it ensures that nobody eating your guacamole is gonna get a big hunk of garlic in their mouth. Then I'm adding in a couple tablespoons of chopped fresh cilantro. Now, whenever you're chopping your cilantro, you wanna cut off the big thick stems towards the end, but the thinner ones towards the top are perfectly fine. And then I've got just a little bit of chopped up green bell pepper. Now, traditionally I would do jalapeno pepper, but because I don't want the guacamole to be spicy because I want to keep it family friendly, AKA I want my kids to eat it, I find that swapping in some green bell pepper works brilliantly. This way we still get the great crunchy texture with the pepper flavor, but we don't have any of the heat. And then I'll just finish that with a heaping quarter teaspoon of kosher salt and gently start to mix this all together. Now, the reason I really like kosher salt is because it has larger crystals of salt than table salt and actually contains fewer salt crystals by volume, which means you're using less salt overall and getting a bit of a crunchy texture from the salt. Once I've got everything mixed together, I'm just gonna transfer this into my serving bowl and this guacamole is ready to go. Now the obvious choice is to serve the guacamole with some corn chips, so simple, so delicious, such a classic, and you can bring it along almost anywhere for any occasion. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Danny Spees and I'll see you back here next time. Cheers. Hope you have those four L's down pat. Next, it's time to learn about the ways to fuel your body the right way on Fit and Delicious. For videos, tips, and the eight-day challenge, visit fitanddelicious.com. To become a Fit and Delicious member, where you'll find over 90 videos, tips, and inspiration, plus all 13 episodes of Fit and Delicious, go to fitanddelicious.com. This is episode 110.